Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? Or him? Uh, Hello. Hello. Hold on. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, we wanted to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, forever. Time. You might actually be the actor from India that we've seen most, I believe, actually. I think we've oh, seen four, you. Four, you. 14 films of yours, I think. Wow. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank we you really so have. You, yeah. It's either you or Irfan, one of the two. That's um, those, are the, those are the two actors I think we've seen the most. But yeah, we've wanted to talk to you for a long time because... Uh, and, we've appreciated your artistry and the fact that you're such a brilliant actor you're so versatile you just everything you want in an actor we see in you and so that's i thank you so much for talking to us we've we, we really been uh, a long time coming uh, to be able to talk to you yeah thank you and i've been watching all your videos i think you guys make some great content and the way you review films it's so much in detail and it's exactly how i feel about films so thank you thank for doing you. what you got. Do. Thank you oh, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first off, let's talk about your new film. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to say Article 15. It's not Article 15. <laughs> Hit. Uh, the first case. <laughs> I apologize. Um, tell us a little bit about that film. We saw the trailer. It looked awesome. We haven't seen the original, but let us know. Obviously, I, I know you don't normally do remakes, but what drew you to this project? Yeah. Was it more the character? Was it the, the overall story? What, what drew you to this one? Well, Hit the First Case is a thriller. So it all started during lockdown when the pandemic just started and we all were in lockdown. And anyways, I watch a lot of content and I was at home watching a lot of film series. And these guys, you know, uh, contacted me and they told me that they want to make this film in Hindi. And I had no idea. As you said, I'm not really too fond of remakes. Yeah. Um, but I said, why not? Let me just watch the film. You know, anyways, I'm, I've been watching so much of so many of films. So I ended up watching it and I was totally hooked. I think it was a great story, brilliantly written screenplay. Uh, one of the best thrillers I saw uh, in recent times. Um, and I love the character. As an actor, I, I thought it's such a great potential in that character to just so just to experience that journey. Uh, so I contacted the director, I spoke to him. And I really I think we just instantly got connected. And I mm -hmm. loved his vision. What he told me was that he wants to make it in Hindi because he wants to take the story to a wider audience. And also he wants to have a fresh take on the Hindi one. Like he doesn't want to take too many things. He just, he just doesn't want to copy paste things, which mm -hmm. I thought was great. But there's no point just copy pasting every shot and every costume. Mm -hmm. then, then we don't need the same guy. Anybody can make it. But yeah. he wanted to change a lot of things in the screenplay. Because also it happens, you know, when you make it once and whatever mistakes you've done in that one, you can actually rectify those mistakes when you make it again. And yeah. that's exactly what Selish, my director, did. And that was his debut film. Uh, he's a scientist. He, uh, he's a PhD. He was working in Australia, but he was always passionate about cinema and films. And he never assisted anyone. He just came to India. He met Nani, the actor, and he produced Hit for him. And Hit worked wonders for him. And now, of course, he's a buddy. I, I have immense respect for him as a filmmaker. He is very, very passionate about it. And that's the reason I said yes to it. I said, you know, uh, I wanted to explore this character because I loved the graph. I loved the arc that you've given to this guy, uh, Vikram, in the film. And we ended up making it. It looks like from, we noticed this immediately from the trailer. And correct us if we're wrong, but you, it looked like you had bulked up a little bit for that character. Is that something that I you did. really did? Yeah, was, it, was that intentionally done? It was, it was. Yeah. Also, I think as you guys, uh, I saw your review of the trailer, as you guys said, I was also anyways bulking for Badhaido. And yeah. that was yeah. the first time uh, somebody asked me to bulk up because Badhaido was a cat which uh, I was needed to be in that shape because he was somebody who was into bodybuilding and wanted to be Mr. India. Yeah. Uh, he could not, his dreams got scattered, but he continued doing it any which ways. So I was already in that shape, but for, uh, but for hit the first case, I, I didn't have to be like in a six pack, uh, physique, but mm -hmm. I wanted him to be slightly broader. Mm -hmm. So I, I changed my regime, I changed my workout and got into this shape for mm -hmm. Vikram. Is there anything that um, scares you with doing a remake? Uh, like, is there anything that, that you, you want to make sure, like, obviously you, you said you don't want to do cut and paste, but is there is there any like fear with doing a remake nowadays in, in the uh, Hindi oh. film industry? 
uh, only scare would be if you are touching a a classic. Yeah, mm, yeah. You know, you I heard. I heard they wanted to remake it. Anand, which would be. Really, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, we no, agree. No, no, don't touch, touch it. it. <laughs> yeah, don't touch it. Let it be. You know. Yeah. Uh, as 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 you, I don't know if you've been to Florence, but if you see the David made by Michelangelo and the replica of it, you can make out the difference. Replica would yeah. always be replica. Yeah. Uh, you want to change few things here and there, and if you want to have like a fresh take and not just copy paste it, I think then that's the only fun. So yeah. I think I don't think so. We should really touch classics, especially like if somebody would come with me uh, with a story of the Godfather and say, you know, I want to make it in Hindi. I would say no. I'm right. not doing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's been one of my favorite films. Uh, unless Kapola comes and says, you know, Raj, I want to make it in Hindi. I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> I agree. But yeah. but yeah, there are there are stories which are universal, and you know, you know there are some uh, uh, stories which haven't which have been like told in a great way but has, for some reason they could not reach out to a wider audience if there are such stories and you want to remake them then i think that this should not be an issue mm, sure sure now without giving any spoilers away i think it's revealed in the trailer but it's my understanding that vikram is is a, a man who's suffering from some post traumatic stress disorder correct and yes. i i i know and i will i'll ask you in a minute some specifics about your process you may give us some answers right now but i was wondering what was the process in this particular role for you to get in his headspace without giving any spoilers away? What was yeah, it you needed to yeah. do to be him as a post-traumatic stress disorder man? Also, I think another thing which got me attracted towards Vikram, uh, playing Vikram was usually when we see actors playing police officers, especially in, in, in Hindi films, we see them playing, always playing uh, also playing it with a lot of heroism. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all macho and they would always be in a shape. They would be, you know, kicking out 100 people at a time, which is right. a different genre altogether. Yeah. Uh, with due respect to that genre. But I think what made him human was all these things, what you just mentioned. You know, yeah. he, can, he can be a police officer, but still he, there, there can be some trauma in his personal life. Yeah. So as Vikram, he is somebody who is carrying a lot of baggage from his past. Yeah, he's going through this trauma, and that keeps uh, getting triggered uh, because of his professional life. I think that's what got me attracted because you know he is so vulnerable at times. Mm -hmm. uh, and about the the whole uh, mental illness thing, about PTSD, about anxiety attacks, I had no experience at all. Mm -hmm. So I needed to do some research. So I read a lot about it. I spoke to a couple of experts. I watched a lot of interviews of people going through these things. And yeah. it's not easy at all. It is not easy. And then I saw some reference videos. And also Selish also did his own research. He's been writing the script for almost three years. So mm -hmm. he had a lot to, uh, you know, uh, offer. So yeah. all this together really helped me uh, in edging out this in etching out this character. Yeah. Good, I assume. You've worked with um, so many of our dosts actually now, which is, is so wonderful to say. Uh, you've worked like a lot of legends that we, we absolutely adore uh, in the industry. And now, obviously, um, um, I'm afraid, I apologize for kidding. Uh, Sanya Mahot? Yeah, S Sanya, Lutra, right? Sanya. Yes. Okay, Sanya I didn't wanna, I'm terrible with names. Yeah. I apologize. Uh, she's Can you say the first name? Sanya. Yeah, Sanya. Uh, yeah. Uh, love her. Uh, she, she was in Love Hostel, love Hostel. earlier this year. The most recent thing we've seen. So I love, love yeah. that movie. Um, but is that something that's uh, important to you in, in looking when you're looking at a, uh, a, a script uh, or, or a project to be attached to? Do you look for yeah. people also attached first or is it character first? Then it's uh, who, who else is attached? Well, it is always this. It, it's hi, you guys. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's, it's always the story first. The screen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's good. It's always the story first, uh, the screenplay, everything, and uh, then my character. And then I think it's it's a blessing if you get good co-actors with you. Because yeah. I think with that that way, you can really create something magical on screen. You know, for me also as an actor, I'm not somebody who's always saying what's written. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly improvising. I'm constantly looking for, searching for the truth in a scene. And when you have someone like Sanya, who's, who's equally passionate about what she does, and she is brilliant in what she does. Mm -hmm. it really makes our job easy you know yeah. you don't have to because it's acting as you know acting is all about reacting mm -hmm. it's, it's not it's two people just reacting to each other uh, mm -hmm. in a given situation 
So when I have a good co-actor, when I look, look into that actor's eyes, I see truth. And that, that makes it so easy. That makes it so much of fun to, yeah. to do what I do. Yeah. Because then, you're, then you can just let us be. Then you can just leave us anywhere, give us any situation, and we will create something. Uh, you know, of course, uh, following a director's vision. Uh, but it's beautiful when two actors, you know, uh, you put them together who are genuinely actors. Mm-hmm. What they yep. can do for the scene is is not like everybody can do. Agree. Agree completely. And speaking of actors that you've worked with, uh, this is a two-part question about the same actor. So I have heard that the if not the inspiration, one of the biggest inspirations for you to become an actor was after you saw Manoj Bajpayee acting. Is that correct? One of so, them, yes. Yeah. So then my next question would be, what was it like the first time you got to work with him and be on set uh, and be uh, acting with him? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Manoj sir is one of them. So I grew up in uh, Gurgaon, which is like a, a city next to Delhi. And when I was growing up there, it was actually a small town. Now, of course, it looks like Singapore. But at that time, it wasn't like that at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... I started doing theater. I decided when I was a kid, I want to act in movies. I want to be a film actor. And I was on one side, I was watching uh, uh, Mr. Shah Rukh Khan's films. And on the other side, I was watching, you know, uh, Shul and Satya, Manoj mm. Bajpayee's film. Yeah. So I think I, I, got, I got something from both of them. Uh, maybe that's the reason, you know, I can, I, I love commercial films as well. And also I love uh, you know, dramas, intense uh, uh, stories and biopics. Uh, thanks to these guys. They really influenced me. Uh, they really inspired me uh, for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, and mm-hmm. when I met him for the first time, uh, even now when I meet my idols, I, like every day I, I want to learn something new. When I meet somebody who's a senior whose book I've really admired for a long time, I ask them so many questions because I want to grasp as much as I can because I don't know yeah. if I would have the opportunity again. So we did a film together called Chita Gong in 2011. Uh, it's me, Nawaz, uh, Jaydi Pehlavat, Manoj sir, a lot of people are there, uh, Vijay Verma. Uh, oh, so okay. I would just, I should just sit with him and I would just ask him question about how you did that scene in, in Satya and what was your process during Shul. And he was very kind. He is now, of course, he's a dear friend, uh, but he was very, very kind to just share everything. And, you know, that's what I love. You know, acting is something you can never say, I, I know it all. Every right. day, every day you're exploring something new. You're pushing yourself. Uh, and if you can really learn something from someone, then why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously we're both actors. And so as, a, as I'm sure it's the same with you because I've talked to many, many actors and this is, this is the case. When, before your, your career starts and you're thinking about getting into acting, often actors will imitate their favorite artists, right? Uh, yeah. And try to be their favorite characters or the favorite actors. Obviously, mine was like Johnny Depp characters or, or I think yours was uh, uh, Stallone. Or, uh, Robin. 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 It was Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. Robin. A combination of Robin Williams and Daniel Day-Lewis. And obviously, before oh, you... Oh, yeah. Yeah, obviously, before you realize that, oh, I need to be myself and actually create my own stuff. Right. Were the people for you, was it Manoj and Shah Rukh Khan characters that you kind of imitated before? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. That's how it all started. I used to, what I sh- really used to. What Shah Rukh Khan characters? Everything. So as a kid, I was a very, fil- I was a filmy kid. Any sure. film I would watch and for next two weeks, you would see me behaving like, like that guy. Right. Like when I saw DDLJ and my name is Raj, like Raj Kumar Raj. When yeah. I saw DDPJ, Dilwale uh, Dunyan Le Jayenge, I became Raj for two, three weeks. <laughs> right. People would call me Raj Kumar and I would correct them. Oh, Raj. <laughs> My name is Raj. I can totally relate. <laughs> it's amazing. When I, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So whatever film I would see, I would just be that guy and I would start mimicking uh, that character for a while. When I yeah. saw, uh, you know, uh, Satya, I became Bhikkhu Matre. Uh, when I saw Ghulam, I became that character uh, that Amir Sir did. So I think it, I was just, I was so amazed by these performances that I just started living them. I think that's the beauty of cinema. It really, it can really touch you. Uh, it can really touch you in, in beautiful ways. Did you ever recreate the Manoj uh, iconic line uh, in, in Satya? <laughs> the king of Mumbai, I think it is. Mumbai, Bombay ka king kon, Bhikkhu! <laughs> yep. Yep. So That's me and awesome. my friend, when we, when, we, when we came to Mumbai, this is exactly what we were doing. We were just going by the beaches and just saying these lines. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Now, when you started off acting, like I think most actors do this, they they begin with imitation because it's the highest form of flattery, and then at some point they learn incarnation. And I, I was wondering at what point did that become a reality for you? Was imitation ever a part of your process? Is it still a part of your process? Or did you really quickly learn, I don't want to try to be SRK in this role. I need to be me in this role. I'm interested in the beginnings yeah, of yeah. your learning acting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I was, I was imitating when I was a kid, when I didn't even start doing theater, but when, when I started doing theater and I, I got serious about my, my work, then of course everything took a backseat because then I, I wanted to explore characters. I wanted to ask my teachers a lot of questions about acting and about different methods, be it Stanislavski, be it Stella Adler, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or, or Brett. Um, I was doing all that. I started doing all that. I took it very seriously. Then of course, imitation I took a backseat. And then right. when I went to my film school, uh, which is uh, FTI in Pune, one of the mm -hmm. best film schools in, in all over Asia, there I think everything got changed because before that I didn't have um, access to a lot of international films. The only English language film I saw was Titanic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe Mission Impossible. Yeah. Okay. Sure. okay. Yeah. But film school gave me a new life. Uh, you know, it suddenly I was open to Italian cinema, to Daniel Day Lewis, to mm -hmm. Robert De Niro's of the world, to Al Pacino, mm -hmm. Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh. I was, and I was zapped. And, and then I, of course, I, I started learning about their process and sorry, then I started good. learning about, about, their, about their process and the way they prepare their characters and yeah. what all they go through. And that really inspired me. And I decided, you know, this is my journey. This is who yeah. I would like to be and not yeah. anybody else. Yeah. And then of course, as actors, you know, like you find, you find your own process. You can learn yeah. whatever you want, but eventually you have to create your own process, whatever suits you. Uh, yeah. But these people, these all these greats, Meryl Streep, uh, you know, they really, really inspired me with their amazing filmography. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know you act, you haven't played a, a ton of, I guess, India calls them negative characters, but you have obviously had played played some, like in um, yeah. Uh, it's not Shahid; it's the other one. Well, no, it's uh, the other one. Omar. Oh, Marta. Yeah. yeah, Marta. yeah. Yeah, uh, so different characters like that, um, yeah. and would love to see you actually playing like really intense villains. Yeah. So hopefully one day we get, we get some of that. But do you ever find it difficult to not judge your characters ever? Oh, um, well, when I read them, uh, it's it's very human. I think it's very impulsive to judge judge them once, you know, just yeah. to whenever you read, like how can somebody do this? Uh, yeah. Like when I did Omerta and I got to know about Omar Sheikh, of course it's. It's very inhuman, you know, uh, being a terrorist is, is something nobody appreciates. Yeah. Uh, right. But once you start with Omerta, it happened to me. Once I started my, my research, my homework for the character, and I started going deep into him, in, into his psyche and, and started, you know, adapting his internal uh, process, his, uh, his mindset, then things changed for me. I, I, I started feeling like him. Mm -hmm. I was carrying so much of hate and so much of anger for a couple of months that it started, it literally started disturbing me. I genuinely wanted to get out of that film yeah. ASAP because I, yeah. I was not comfortable in that skin mm -hmm. because it started, uh, you know, I started feeling like him. Mm -hmm. I would see someone and, and I, I would start thinking what Omar, like how Omar would think. Mm. Yeah. And it was a very, very dark space for me. Mm, sure. Uh, yeah, but uh, but I have, a, I have something to share. You know, I, I saw your trailer review, me and Patra Lekha, we were in uh, Italy, we were holidaying there and we saw your review. And there also, I think you mentioned that Raj should uh, you do some negative characters and exactly what Patra told me. She's like, you know, I, even I would love to see you playing these negative characters. And personally, as actor, I'm, I'm sure you would agree Playing mm -hmm. a negative character is so much fun. Enjoy oh, so interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's the best. It's so interesting because you have the whole playground. You don't play by the rules. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Absolutely. You know, play like a simpleton, like a sweet uh, lead boy from a small town. It's nice, but it gets boring after a point. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, and you've got very clear objectives. Your why is extraordinarily clear when you're the bad guy. Um, exactly and there is there's a lot more you can do and usually get away yeah. with and, and like, go ahead please no, no please 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 yeah yeah no i was gonna say that and and 
the depth that you have demonstrated. I mean, we we it didn't take us fourteen films no. to to recognize. We like, I mean, thankfully, we're able to recognize, as I'm sure you are. A- actors can recognize actors. Like we we I, watched oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. when we first saw Nasir and Shaw. It was in <laughs> the the Deborah. We call movie. it the Deborah movie. It's it's made a nom named Deborah, the Rithic one. The Rithic movie yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Art, Right. That's the first place we first ever saw. Place him. We ever saw him. And when we saw him in that small scene he has playing one the dad, scene, yeah. one scene, we both were like, that's a thespian. And we, who is that we guy? called Nasserdin <laughs> Shah the Deborah dad for a good while. Yeah, but, Why Deborah dad? Yeah, I, that's the only thing we knew him that's from. The only thing we knew and him we're, from. we're dumb. This is stupid. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of the channel. I, I bring that up in that we had, the, we had the, a similar response when we saw you. And, mm-hmm. and that was the immediacy of recognizing the caliber of actor in the moment who is incarnating and who is believable and is uh, just pretty much just being the character at every moment in every frame and the kind of actor that no matter the film, the film may not be enjoyable, but the actor is always enjoyable. And we found you to be that, that kind of actor. My last question I had about just your process is that over time, like you said earlier, that actors discover their process. How would you describe your process now? Would you describe yourself as being method or as Shia LaBeouf has said, he's method adjacent? And how much does that change film to film? Sometimes is it, the, the, you, you feel it in the costume. Sometimes it's the backstory you've worked on. Yeah. Well, it, it totally depends on the, the kind of film I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you do a film like Shahid or an Omerta, uh, like intense dramas, uh, which are, too realistic in nature then of course the process is very different like I uh, of course I, I I do my homework I, I make the backstory for all my characters because that because that really gives me a lot of clarity about the guy and uh, mm-hmm. I have friends like actor friends and we do this uh, thing where we ask questions after I'm done with my backstory so we uh, we just ask questions like if if as Raj would ask me anything I would say where were you born what are your mm-hmm. favorite colors what film do you like so we do that we do that exercise uh, they ask me questions about my character uh, and it's great, great because you, you're exploring, you're exploring then and there uh, yeah. that what works, what doesn't work. I, I do that exercise quite a lot, actually. Uh, but yeah, making a backstory certainly helps me uh, yeah. in, in finding the character. And uh, and then, of course, my relationship with the other characters in the film, I work on that. You know, you we behave differently with different people. You know, you behave differently with your parents and with your best friend and your love interest. Right. So how, how how it changes, how it shifts. So really, the working on the relationship is another important factor for me in a film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kind of relationship do we share in a film? Uh, yeah. So a lot, a lot actually is involved. It, it keeps changing film to film. But when I do a film like Three or a hmm. Barfi, then it's mostly about getting if it's it's set in a region. So I try mm-hmm. and get the accent. I try and imbibe the accent, the language from that region. And then it's more about just being in the moment. Yeah, you know, and just have fun. Just have fun with the scene because it's a comedy. Uh, you need to. You can't really take it seriously. Of course, comedy is a serious business. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. It is. And and the kind of comedy I like is where it's it's very straight face. You know, mm-hmm. you're not really physically trying to make people laugh. No, you're just reacting to the situation. And writing plays a very important part in comedy. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. Have to have great situation, funny situations. Put them, put them in some really stupid situations and let them react. I think from comedy comes out from that, which yeah. just Chaplin has has taught all of us. You know the way he used to perform. Uh, he would always be stuck somewhere, but we would be laughing on his tragedy. Right, and exactly. Are, are great, are wonderful. Yeah. So I think yeah, keep shifting homework, uh, backstory, relationship with the, my other characters, uh, this question answer session with my mm-hmm. uh, fellow actor friends. Oh, uh, and sometimes I, I like with Newton, if I need to change something physically, then I try and start doing that before we start filming. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for Newton, you know, I did something that there was a twitch in my eyes yep. and I wanted to be a part of my personality and not just do it right. on set. So right. I started doing that before uh, we started filming, like a couple of days before that, because I wanted it to come very naturally to me, mm. not really close and not really planned. That I'm gonna do this thrice in this line and then yep. do it. Yeah, twice didn't want to become a shtick. Exactly. No, yep. You cannot. You cannot plan these things. 
Mm-hmm. How, how long did it take to break that habit? The, for specifically, like the blinking for Newton, did it take you a while to come out of that habit? Oh, yeah, oh yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. I figured it did. Yeah. <laughs> it was a part of the personality. Right. Yeah, I think because, because it's all muscle memories, you know? Right. Your muscle starts behaving that way. Yeah. And it, it took me a while to come back. Consciously, I had to put in a lot of effort that, you know, oh wait, I'm still doing that. I can't, right. I can't. Right. I figured. I'm so interested in all your characters' favorite films. Um, <laughs> what What was Newton's favorite film? The, Newton's the favorite film? Well, yeah. Newton really doesn't watch too many films, but uh, <laughs> you know, he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't show it. But I think he's somebody who's very fond of romantic films internally. He doesn't share what, it, though. What, what about your character in Badai Do? But I do, he loves me. Of course, he loves watching wrestling a lot between two men. <laughs> <laughs> For more reasons than one. Yes. That's, and this that's... character, in this character, in Hit, what's his No, he doesn't, watch he doesn't watch Okay, he doesn't watch yeah, films. He's too... He doesn't watch cinema. He's, he's too busy. He's too engrossed in his own world. He doesn't watch. He doesn't have a TV at home. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, music, yeah. yeah. What, what, um, what inspires you? Uh, what inspires me? Uh, actually, I'm look. I'm always. I'm always in lookout for inspiration. Mm-hmm. It can be a quote uh, that you must have seen in your Instagram reel. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah. A, oh yeah. It can be a performance, and I follow a lot of uh, handles uh, which talk about acting and cinema, and sometimes they put in some great content, which is which is highly inspiring. Uh, but I think seeing someone, uh, seeing a great performance always inspires me. Like I saw King Richard and I saw uh, Mayor of mm-hmm. Town uh, mm-hmm. last, uh, what I remember, or, or Dope Sick. Uh, these things, these performances uh, really inspired me. Also, you figure yeah. out that there's, there's so much to explore. Whenever I, whenever you know, people around you tell you that, you know, oh, wow, great job, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then I think about Daniel Day-Lewis and I watch some clip and I figure out what a small actor I am. <laughs> Everybody is compared yeah. to Daniel. <laughs> That's not a good one to compare to. <laughs> uh, when when you're not acting, what are yeah. some of the things that you enjoy doing the most in your spare time? I just love hanging out with my friends and and just laugh out on really stupid things, really silly things which nobody else understands. It's just right. between us. Uh, otherwise, I love traveling. But I think mostly, I think, and that's what, you know, people around me, especially Patuleka, who's known me for 12 years now, she says, you are, you were always meant to be in films because you love cinema. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really love films. I love watching films. I, I, I can talk about cinema 24-7, uh, <laughs> discussing actors. Uh, and I, I genuinely love it. Even now, like, now I'm a professional actor. Like, you know, I, I'm working in films. Even now, if I'm going somewhere in my car, and you know, if I see lights, if I see you know some set and some vanity van, some trailers, yeah. I get really excited. The 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 kid in me from Gurgaon, my 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 hometown, is still yeah. very much alive right there. I still yeah. get excited. Oh, shooting! Who's shooting? Who's filming? Who's actor? Who's the actor? What's happening? I think yeah, I I just love making films. Yeah, yeah. It it shows in your work, and it's also I think the a, a hallmark of really great filmmakers of all ilks like the, the time we spent recently with with Anurag half the time was spent talking about have you seen any of the new releases yeah. have you seen this yeah. film have you seen this film and that excitement yeah. that you get and it, it the, the love that you have for the craft shows in in your work because oh, it, it, you. it, it it embodies everything that you do and I, I I wonder is is there anything that you've yet to do that you're really yearning to do, whether that's genre or maybe it's a classic piece from the world of theater you'd love to see turned into a motion picture? Well, my all-time favorite uh, work from uh, literature is Hamlet. Uh, yeah, I think what Me too. A Man what after a, my own heart. Yeah, what a character. I wish somebody, someday I could play that. You know, somebody can adapt it. And oh. I could, I could play that. Uh, though Vishal, sir, Vishal Bhardwaj, he made a film called Heather. Which was oh, we know. On- oh, we know. Yes. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I, I recreated the entire monologue um, 
You did? Uh, that Shahid did in yeah, Hindi. In Hindi. I don't did. know Hindi. I just wow. learned it specifically for that. I would love to see that. Where is that? I'll send it. I'll send it to you. But Please yeah, do. Uh, oh, that'd be great. That'd I don't be know great. Hindi. I want to make that very clear. I do not know Hindi. <laughs> but, but yeah, oh, we love that film. Absolutely adore yeah, that so film. I, yeah, I yeah. love. Now, are you, would you like to do a word for word rendering from the Shakespearean? Uh, I'm not sure. I think you need a you need years of training to understand that language. You know, it it's, mm -hmm. it it won't come naturally to me. So I would rather do do it in either in English or in Hindi. Uh -huh. You know, yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. will have to adapt it. Yeah. Sure. So you've done, to my knowledge, three LGBTQ films, um, yes. and which is a lot considering there's not that many in Indian cinema, really. Yeah. Um, it's, so is that something that's important to you uh, to tell these stories that don't often get told? Or is it something that you just saw the character? They just happen to be an LGBTQ character. Uh, just want to. I think uh, with Aligarh and Badhai, though, I was very happy with the fact that it, it talks about LGBTQI community uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and talks about uh, the community in this way. Uh, with yeah. Ek Ko Dekha Ko Aisa Laga, also, again, I was very happy with the fact that, you know, somebody's, uh, somebody like, like Sonam, who's a, a, a commercial big star, uh, has agreed to play, uh, you know, um, uh, that character, a lesbian mm -hmm. girl. Uh, and I, I try, and whenever I can, I try and do films which can also you know, bring in some change in the society, which is, which mm -hmm. is important. You know, if art can contribute in that, uh, it's the most beautiful feeling. Yeah. And with Badhaido, yeah. that happened. With Badhaido, we, I, like all of us, all of us in the, from the team got so many messages on our social media handles and, and otherwise personal messages and voice notes where people were so thrilled and people who, because it's very easy to come out in front of your families. I think it's the, it's the, sorry, it's, it's not, it's, it's very tough yeah. to come out in front of your families. It's the yeah. hardest, yes. but Badhai do, and I knew, I know you guys keep saying Badhai do, it's Badhai do. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That wouldn't be, not your fault. It would be the first time we've I'm just stupid. announced a it's, movie from India. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. I'm just correcting do. you so that from now do. on you can yeah. say Badhai do. 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 Yeah. do. do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the kind of reactions we got that people were come that our film gave them strength to come out in front of their families yeah. and loved ones, which is great. I think you know if yes, if your work wonderful. can yeah if your work can inspire people and give them courage, yeah, that's what you know. That's why we do what we do. You can touch if you can touch someone's life with your work. That's the most I think beautiful reward you can get. Absolutely, hey, easily are in the top two to three films of the year for Absolutely. us. Easily, uh, but, but that, yeah, it really was, and felt that very much. Felt I can't imagine. You know, I, yeah, I have a very, very small. I have a very small. Yeah, yeah something, something share. So, so for Badai, though, for me, uh, the last, of course, the fifteen minutes when my mm -hmm. character comes out in front of his family. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and in the whole film, he's somebody who's so scared of coming out. Right. Uh, you know, uh, when when Bhumi's character, uh, when she was caught and her family found out, the first thing he does was he calls her and he tells her, you know, do not tell them about me. Mm -hmm. Right. Is, when I read that as like, you know, it's amazing. And and my director, Harsh, told me that a lot of actors actually and even the uh, other like makers told him that, you know, you need to remove this line because no actor would agree to say this line because it makes him a loser. Mm, and what? I was like, no, oh, you have no. to keep this line because when this guy who's so scared comes out, that's where I think the winning is. That's where yes. people will look for him. That yes. you, you were such a big, you know, <sighs> such a coward. You are coming out. So yeah, any which way. So that scene, you know, that was a, one of the most, of course, difficult scenes for me to, to portray, uh, to play. Uh, but by the time, and luckily we shot the scene towards the end. And, yeah. and these guys keep, keep telling me, you know, oh, that monologue will shoot that day, that monologue. And I kept telling them, kept correcting them. Can we not call it a monologue, please? Mm. I don't want to treat it like a monologue. Right. I want to have a conversation with my family. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a talk between right. Shard and his family. So right. Because when you, when, you, when you start, you know, psyching yourself out, like I have to do this monologue, monologue, I think it, really, it can really hamper you somewhere. You start Agreed. thinking about it differently. Yeah. But if you see it like, you know, it's, it's another scene. It's a conversation between two people. Mm -hmm. I think that, that, that really, I, I felt very comfortable when I started thinking like that. And when, when, when we stopped calling it a monologue. Yeah. And that's how I wanted to treat it. And I, yeah. with me, 
So I don't rehearse. I I really don't believe in too many rehearsals, especially scenes mm-hmm. like this, where it's all about being in the moment and yeah. seeing yes. what happens. Yes. Yes. See, see what happens because you can't plan. I never plan my my scenes, my performance, and I'm 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 very glad that happened. You know, I that scene. Uh, and when we saw it, I came out, and I and the terrace scene. Uh, you know, uh, after that, where I had yeah. my mother, it was so surreal. We of course they said cut. It took me around you know five seven minutes to come out of it, and then I turned around and I saw my DOP was crying, uh-huh. my director was crying, my chief AD was crying, my sound recorders was crying just by listening to the audio, and yeah. we knew that you know something beautiful happened. Oh yeah, it should it should touch the. Uh, accord with everyone yeah, yeah and it it did that does not surprise me that's one of my things i always think of i would love to know what was going on behind the scenes in that moment and that that terrace moment that right after that you had just said is is such a, a beautiful special precious moment and it doesn't surprise me that uh, you don't want to rehearse because you can discover something in the rehearsal and then you don't want to try to replicate it cuz then it's you're fake, imposing yeah. something on the material that's fake it's not yeah. believable and in the moment it's already you're, you're doing it because it worked before and exactly. yeah I, I great have you ever had a moment where you looked at the shooting schedule and you thought oh no because one of those pinnacle quintessential moments was early and you really hadn't been in the, the character yet <laughs> uh luckily no that Good. hasn't happened that's and I would great really appreciate it stays, <laughs> i would really, really appreciate it stays the same way Yes. Because I know if if I if I ever do that also, I'm gonna request my director to reshoot that scene. Yeah, yeah, please. Because yeah. I, yeah, because also I think you're exploring. You know, it 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 takes you around two three days in the beginning to figure out what's working. Mm-hmm. Uh, because you come with your whole preparation, but then there are different surroundings, there are different actors, and maybe sometimes the other actor is not on the same wavelength. You need to then you know change few things here and there. So yeah, I think yeah. If that ever happens, I'm pretty sure I'm going to ask my director. You know what? Yeah. Listen, that scene now. I think now I'm more prepared mentally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've often said you're one of the most versatile actors we've we've seen. You can do great comedy, mm-hmm. and you could also do ridiculously good dramatic work. Um, and that's why we call you Young Pankaj a lot. Uh, because <laughs> we we also think he's as good at, at both of those things, and you both also have this. Uh, I don't really know what it is. This innate quality about you that is something that every character you have. There's something so endearing about them. Is that something that you feel you bring to it, or is that just so, that's who you are, and that just happens to flesh out into the character? Yeah, yeah. It's it's God given, I think. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. It comes from you. It's, it's something to do, but that's why I love doing Omertas of the world, because you know that's where you get a chance to just break everything, break every mold. That whole, uh, you know, he's so vulnerable, he's so lovable. No, he is scary. That's yeah. why I, I love. I would love to do more and more negative characters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like yeah. I would be interested to see. I'm I'm assuming you have seen Gangs of New York. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So many. I would love to see you portraying a character like Bill the Butcher. You bet. Oh yeah, Bill the Butcher is is awesome, man. What yeah, a yeah, guy! Yeah. That one stone eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Well, even even stuff like like Nawaz is like Raman Raga. Sure, right? absolutely. You, you, yeah. there's the, I don't think yeah. there's anything out there that you you actually couldn't play. Great. Um, you're, you're, you're that I think you know my one of my two of my actually a couple of them my favorite negative characters would be Javier Bardem from No Country for Old Men. Oh yes. yes, yeah. Was, oh man, what a performance! So scary. He's not yep. doing anything. Not doing much. Actually, there's so many. There's so much of silence in his in his performance. Yes. But that is what is scary because you don't know what he's thinking and what he's going to do next. It's all in the eyes, which is mm-hmm. so, so scary. Or or Heath Ledger in of course The Dark Knights, where again yes. you don't, he is so goofy. He's always moving around. It's it's so it's so physical the performance. But again, on the one side, you have Javier Bardem, who's so quiet. And mm-hmm. then you have, you know, uh, the Joker, who's always yeah. jumping and, and doing something. But both are brilliant. Both yes. Are brilliant. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So if you could go back, if you could go back 20 years to talk to yourself, what's a piece of advice you would give yourself if you could talk to you 20 years ago? Uh, 
So 20 years ago, I was, I just started theater. Yeah, I just started theater. I started working towards my dream. Right. And I was, you know, I didn't have a life. So, uh, like, we were never really very lucky with money, like, financially. Mm -hmm. Uh, But but I was very passionate about what I was doing. So I was was cycling from uh, my hometown to Delhi to do theater, almost 70 kilometers up down every, not every day, but but, uh, so many days. Yeah, uh, but I was very happy because I was going to do something which I was, I still am in love with. So I would just tell myself, you know, I know, of course, you're, you're working hard, but okay, it's fine. You know, just, just take some time out for yourself also, you know, go out. I, like, I didn't have a girlfriend. I was so focused for five, mm-hmm. six years. I was just not doing anything. I, was, right. I wanted to be the hardest worker in the room mm-hmm. and, and, just, and just learn as much before I, I decided before I go to Mumbai, I have to be prepared. I didn't want to go there, you know, underconfident that, you know, I'm right. here. Also because I was not the most good looking guy and I was very aware with that fact. Uh, of course, now I look slightly decent, uh, but at that time, <laughs> <and> yeah. <laughs> you do. It's true. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, because now, now there are people, there's a team who somebody does not hair. Fuck you, man. Um, so when you're on a a film set right how soon maybe you don't know because you have so many amazing films how soon do you know that this is not working in terms of the film well I think second or third day well first day you get the impulse but then you uh, uh, give it a you know just benefit of doubt that maybe it's not that day maybe it's one of those days Mm -hmm. But second or third day, you're sure. And I've done some. I've done some weak films. I'm. A, I'm very aware of the fact. I'm a very honest critic of my work and my films. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, and I say it very openly. Of course, I don't name those films because it's not yeah, fair to the. Of course. Films. Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 But I'm. I'm very aware of the fact. Some people. Some films might be very popular as well, but mm-hmm. I know. You know, they are weak. It could have been. Mm-hmm. Uh, could have been much much better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, by second or third day, you know that you're. You're in it now. You can't really step out. Uh, so just enjoy the work. I still, I still give, I still give my hundred percent to that character and and try and you know uh, make the best out of it. Uh, but you know, because eventually, whatever you do, whatever said and done, cinema is a director's medium. Yes, right. You can do whatever you want in your performance, but it's not. It's never about only your performance. Mm, it's right. so more involved. Yeah. So on on being critical of yourself, what do you feel is your biggest weakness as an actor? My biggest weakness uh, as an actor? uh, If you think you have one. Of course, of course. Uh, um, First, I I, I think I get too involved in the whole making process, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the whole filmmaking process, uh, not the post-production. But on set, I want everybody to give their 100%. Mm-hmm. And I get very disturbed if I see two extras, you know, not being involved in a scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but but that's how I behave. I want everybody yeah. to give. And, and, yeah. and also, I think uh, I still haven't, I, I got, uh, it has happened with a couple of characters, but I still want to, as you know, you like, we all love Daniel Day-Lewis and his process. And with Trapped, I got that chance with Omerta, with Shahid, uh, with Newton, City Lights, a couple of films I've done that. But with Trapped, I genuinely wanted to live in that apartment for mm. those many days. Because I thought this is the chance for me where, you know, I am in that space throughout. Yeah. And I'm going so deep down in that character that I would, I would just live that life. And I mm. wanted to live that life, of course. But the production said, you know, it's, well, they were not feeling comfortable with the idea that I would stay there in an abandoned right. building. And, and right. it was... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wanted, to out out of yeah. <laughs> because I wanted to figure out where would I shit, where would I pee? There's nothing, <laughs> there. there's no water. Yeah, but that's what you have to do. Yeah, exactly, well, and 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 yeah. not eating for sixteen days. How would it feel? You know, because right. you know, once you on the set, you are there mentally, physically. Right. But then you go back home in your comfort space. You switch on the AC, and suddenly. Subconsciously, you may be in that character, but physically, you're in yeah. another space. You know, you're you're interacting yeah. with other people. You're in a comfort zone, and I wanted, I didn't want to do that. But luckily, if we yeah. ever make track two, that is my plan. So I think yeah, these are the yeah. few things I still want to do. I haven't done, 
And about the weakness, uh, I think I, uh, I've done a lot of like uh, comedies, but I still want to explore some other, you know, funny side of me. Yeah. yeah. I uh, sometimes I feel that, you know, because few things work and few gestures of an actor, we do that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that you know that I would do this and it always works. So right. I mm -hmm. don't want to be in that trap. I think it's very scary. Uh, it can mm -hmm. really kill you as an artist. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that it has may maybe happened in um, two, three films in few moments, not the, the whole mm -hmm. character, but I want to get away from that. Yeah understandably <laughs> and so in addition to obviously hit is is opening very very soon and then it's also our understanding you have some other things coming up that we would love everybody to know about like for example guns and gulabs is that how you pronounce that oh, yeah. yeah guns and yeah. gulabs yeah yeah guns yeah and, yeah looking forward to that one yeah very much looking forward thank to you that. it's fun it's so much fun it's raj and dk at their best yeah well, we love them obviously from family man that was our first wasn't that our first yeah. introduction that was our first introduction them? yeah and and so you have anything... to, I don't know, if you guys have seen Go Go Gone, uh, Not you yet. must, no. you okay. have to watch Raj DK have made some brilliant films and they are the creators of Three as well. They were the writers yes. and the producers of Three. Yes, we have seen that one, yeah. Go Go, <laughs> Go, Go okay. Gone, I think you would really like. It's crazy okay. to another level. Brilliant performances by some of my dear friends, Kunal and all. Uh, and what such a quirky film. It's about zombies set in Goa as the name suggests, but you have to watch the film. It, I think it is available somewhere uh, on some OTT platform. Please watch okay. it and review it. Have to you, check you that one out. You the brilliance of Raj and DK. Okay. <laughs> um, so what do, you, what do you think is harder, comedy or drama? Oh, uh, it may be different for different people, but I think for me, uh, drama is harder. Really? Yeah, because I think I've been I've been goofy and funny all my life. Mm. So some of the things I think come very naturally to me. Mm. Uh, but yeah. it depends, like, you know, drama, it depends how involved you are. As I said, you know, like, like Omerta and Trapped, it's very taxing. Comedy yeah. is, is it's tough as well. I'm not saying it's easy to be genuinely funny and not really overdoing it. It is tough. But I think once either you know it or you don't know it, you know, there are some actors who are just naturally funny. Uh, and some can really work on their uh, on their art form uh, yeah. and then learn how to be how to do comedy. But yeah. some are naturally born funny. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think. But drama is something you. It's a very thin line in drama, and it it can get very very physically and mentally taxing. With yeah. comedy, with comedy that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. And was that was? Would you say? Omerta was probably the most taxing role you've had to do for yourself to that yeah. you just you said you wanted to get out of it was that the most difficult one for you you think well mentally uh I would say yeah and yeah. Uh, physically I think it was both uh, a web series I did in 2017 yeah I and, wanted to see that one I haven't seen it yet yeah yeah you you must I, I gained some 13 kgs I went half ball for that uh it was also because it was a biopic of one of our greatest yeah. freedom fighters uh, from our mm -hmm. country Subhash Chandra Bose. Uh, so it was a huge responsibility. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and trapped. I think physically these two films were very, very tiring. And now hit, even hit, I think was mentally very tiring. Yeah. Because there are a couple of sequences in the film where he's getting these attacks, these anxiety attacks. And it's not easy. It's not mm. easy to be, to be in that situation for almost, you know, of course the shot is just for five minutes, uh, mm. but you do that two, three times. Uh, but before that, you take your time. Like, I, I really want to be in that headspace, be in that zone. So I asked my, uh, my director, you know, give me some time. I need to be in that, in this mind space. I, yeah. And I take a lot of help uh, of, from music. Music really mm. helps me. Yeah. It really so that good. gets yeah. your head in the right space, yeah? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I want to thank you so much for talking to us, man. I mean, it's been so wonderful. I want to end it off here with a little bit of rapid fire because that's fun to do. Oh, okay. uh, oh, and right. these are going to be more stupid than, than good uh, questions. So just be aware. <laughs> um, sure. Is cereal a soup? Cereal or soup? No, yeah, is, no. no is, is, cereal is cereal actually a soup? A soup? Sorry, come again. You both are talking. I couldn't hear you. Huh? Is, is, it? Cere is cereal milk and, and cereal yeah yeah yes you really yeah is, is that a soup no 
<laughs> okay. Duly <Julie> noted. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite alcoholic yeah. beverage if you if you partake. I don't really drink alcohol, so I won't know. But but a lot of my friends, they really are in. They are having a lot of fun with gin these days. Gin's a fun, very nice. Yeah. I like uh, in the summer. Most underrated Indian actor. Most underrated Indian actor. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Konkona Sen Sharma. Mm. Uh, what other job, if you weren't an actor, would you be doing on a film set? <laughs> Um, I can be a really good uh, chief, AD, um, you know, uh, or I love everything. I, I, I sit with my, uh, my sound team as well. I, sometimes I, I handle the equipments because in a film school, you know, you get to learn everything. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would maybe love, love to direct one day. Uh, mm-hmm. There are no plans as such, but a lot of people have been telling me these days that, you know, you are going to direct. We can see it. That would not surprise me at all. At all. Yeah. What is your wife's favorite role of yours? Patrulekha's favorite role is uh, um, Badaido and Trapped. Um, most overrated film, in your opinion? Most like, overrated. <laughs> just in general. <laughs> Oh, this can be controversial. <laughs> it doesn't have to be Indian if you don't. Yeah, it could be any, any film on the planet. Uh, I don't know. I let me let me come back to it. I really okay. have to think about it. Yeah. Uh, favorite Hindi curse word. <laughs> <laughs> so I I I, I don't know. Really called it, me right? no. Nawaz called me a maracho when we interviewed him. So, <laughs> <laughs> Do so, you know- uh, I, so I, I don't really, as I said, I don't really, uh, I'm not really abusive in real life, but for guns and gulabs, I got a chance to, you know, uh, use some curse words. Uh, but being from Delhi, I think my favorite curse word would be, uh, and there's a way you say it, you know how it, it changes, the language changes everywhere. Yeah. But in yeah. Delhi, you say, uh, ke lode. <laughs> I I'll, have that slow that. I'll have to slow that down. I have said it after. Yeah. <laughs> I've said it after so many years, man. It sounds so weird. <laughs> if you could play one Avengers superhero, what would it be? Hulk. I love Hulk. And especially, I think it's because of Mark Ruffalo's performance. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's the beauty of a good actor. You know, I, I, I remember it so clearly. In, it's such, the climax is going on in the end game or, or Infinity Wars. And I think somebody tells him, and he's going to, you know, uh, be Hulk. He's going to change himself. And somebody tells him, you need to be angry. Come on, get angry. And Mark Ruffalo, such a beautiful artist. He just turns and says, I'm always angry. Without underlining anything, without giving it, you know, giving any stress on, I'm always angry. Nothing. Right, not being right. Thrown. Just throwing the line away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most underappreciated role on a film set? Uh... The production boys, people who are serving, you know, water and tea to everyone. Yeah. Uh, favorite Shah Rukh Khan film? Swades. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, a that's great one. one. Of my favorites for sure. Who should play Shakti Ma? Who should play Shakti Man? Yeah, who should play? <laughs> You've seen Shakti Man? Oh, that's <laughs> no, nice. I didn't. Know. I know of them, and I know they're making a film. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think should now play? who can play Shakti Man uh, Shakti Man was our, actually one of our first Indian superheroes mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people Vicky can play Shakti Man I think really well Vicky Kaushal yeah, yes, yeah of agree. course and yeah. uh, best villain in Indian cinema history hmm there are a couple of uh, Gabbar Singh in Shole. Of course. Um, um, who else? I think Ashutosh Rana in, uh, I don't know if you have seen Sangharsh. It's an, uh, uh, <laughs> 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 what, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, so Mugambo, of course, I was coming to that. Mugambo from Mr. India. Uh, Ashutosh Rana in this film called Sangharsh. Okay. Uh, okay. Long back. Uh, are a couple of my favorite, uh, yeah, villains. Awesome. 
Well, thank you so much. I'm for, still thinking for... about the overrated film. I think I'm going to message you. I'm not sure. That's okay. Fine. That that's yeah. Fine. yeah. Do send, send I, a message. Just I, so think, we know. I think it's like Titanic. In my opinion, I I hate that. Film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it could be whatever. Um, but I want to thank you so much for chatting with us. We like I said, we wanted to chat with you. Since probably we, I, I don't even, I don't even remember what the first film of yours is we saw. I think it was Newton. Was it Newton? I think it was. I that love, was very early on. Yeah, I love Newton. Oh. Um, but we, uh, we wanted to talk to you for so long because we know and we could tell, and it's evident from our conversation that you, you are, you are a thespian through and through. You love the craft. You take it so seriously, but but also not seriously because you're so good at what you do. Um, but th- those these people like yourself are, are, are favorite people to talk to because you, you oh, just you. Uh, essentially essentially you can talk shop right. and it's it's yeah. our favorite thing to do you, you're one of the most talented actors acting today and that's that's throughout the world uh thank and you. i mean that from the bottom of my heart and so i want to thank you so much for thank for you with us. Rick. yeah i i consistently have a word that I, I think i made up i don't know if it exists in the english language but i, I elevative artistry where it's it's artistry that is taking the art forms, particularly with storytelling and film and theater and, and acting and, and doing things with them that are not only honoring to the art form itself and what it's intended to do, but taking it to the highest levels that we can, that we can see right now. And when people do that, it, it's always excited us. I mean, for years, we've been talking movies and shop because we're actors in our hearts and it's, it's, we're like you, we love movies. And oh, yeah. you I genuinely, yeah, you genuinely are the, the, the kind of actor that we want everybody to watch because when people watch you, in my opinion, that is what elevative artistry is all about. I, I, I can find no finer actor doing film right now in the world anywhere and everything you do, we want to watch. So just... Thank you thank for being who you are and, and don't change a thing. Keep loving film and keep yeah. doing the process you do because the results are absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. And, you yeah. know, there are very few people that I follow on YouTube and you guys are certainly right up there. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Keep, thank keep you. doing what you guys are doing. As I said, keep, keep making these videos because it's, it's very inspiring to, you know, see two actors talking so passionately about what they love which is movies yeah yeah thank you and again if you do get if you do come to la please let us know we would love we to see to, you we, we have yeah. To see you. yeah and yeah. everybody else watching please go watch hit the first yes. case <laughs> uh and subscribe and subscribe to our stupid reactions guys <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> thank you <laughs>